Redstone signal strength can only go up to 15. But what if we need to add more? Well today, I'll show you how I solved that for a blackjack minigame and a clever solution from one of you guys on how to go even beyond that. Welcome everybody, welcome guys to the channel. This is Giorgio and I'm finally back from holiday. Super excited to be here with you guys again, uh, doing some redstone in the channel. This is gonna be the sketchbook, the redstone sketchbook episode two. So hopefully you enjoy. First, let's refresh how comparator addition works in Minecraft. Comparators have two modes, comparison and subtraction. Now comparison is very useful, but not for adding numbers. So let's ignore it for this one. Since redstone maxes out at 15, we use that as our base. If we subtract our inputs from 15, then subtract again from 15, we end up with their sum. For example, we want to add 7 plus 4. So we subtract them from 15, and then that again from 15. The 15s cancel, and we are left with the total. Easy peasy. In Minecraft, that looks like this. Notice how the first um, subtraction goes down and the second one goes up whenever I increase one of the inputs. And that right there is comparator addition. But of course, it is still capped at 15. And for a blackjack game, we need a little bit more than that. Now, not gonna lie, my solution is a little hacky, but for this specific application, it works out perfectly. And it works like this. Instead of letting card values go over 15, I compress them by subtracting until I've taken away exactly 10 across the entire player hand. For example, the memory starts at 10. If a two comes in, it becomes a zero, and the memory now holds an 8. The next card, say a 9, loses 8 and becomes a 1, and after that, cards just pass through normally because the memory is now at 0. This works out perfectly because it keeps everything between 0 and 15, and if the total goes past 11, that means the hand is over 21. If it hits exactly 11, that's exactly 21. And with aces, it works just fine as well, because I just subtract 10 if needed, turning their value from an 11 into a 1. And by the way, this is the little contraption that I used to do exactly that. So this back here is the memory for the subtraction. So first we have it at 10, and by default it's at 10. If we click this button, it will reset and return to 10. And right here on this redstone is where we input the card, the incoming cards. So I've set up this, we have it at 7 right now, so 3 of those should give us 21. The first one comes in, and you see the lamp turns off on this lamp right here, and that means that the card turned into a 0. So the first one is 7 minus 10, of course it will return a 0, and as you can see here in the memory, now we have a 3. Now if we input another 7, we'll see that now that redstone there, for a split of a second, it shows a 4. So that means that 7 minus 3 is 4 and now our memory should be empty as you can see here. And if we input a third 7 we should see a 7 come right on that redstone and there it is, a 7 for a split of a second. So 7 plus 4, 11. And if you remember what we said, 11 equals 21. So that works perfectly, and this is the card compactor that we have. The memory is now empty, if we want to reset it, we just did that, and it goes back to 10. Compact, fast, a little hacky, but practical for blackjack. So just to give you a little bit of more context, guys, if you haven't watched the last episode, um, well, first of all, totally recommend you to do that. It's going to be down in the description up here in the info cards. So just go there and watch it. But uh, in that episode, I ask you guys as a puzzle on how you would solve the addition of signal strengths going over 15. And I'm very happy to say that Matt suggested in the comments of that video, multi-bit logic. Now, he didn't post a specific design, just the idea of it, but that was enough to me, for me to dive in and to get excited about it. 
and it also means I get to make this video so thank you very very much Matt um, it's super cool and I guess let's dive in so multi-bit logic is the proper way to go if you want to add beyond 15 in a clean and scalable way and this is the key scalable because my my version can only work with uh, small values but multi-bit logic is the proper way to do this and it works very very similar to binary addition but instead of b being base 2 it's gonna be base 16 which is hexadecimal right just as a quick recap and in case you didn't know in binary each bit holds either a 0 or a 1 and it is multiplied by powers of 2 so the first bit will be 1 which is 2 to the power of 0 the next bit will hold a 2 the next bit will hold a 4 and so on while in hexadecimal, or hex for short, each bit holds a value from 0 to 15. And it is multiplied by powers of 16. So the first bit will be 1 times the signal strength, the second bit will be 16 times the signal strength, the third bit will be 256 times the signal strength, and so on. You need more than 15? Just add another redstone line. And that right there, guys, is multi-bit in short words. But here's where it starts getting tricky in redstone. We need to add the inputs, check if the sum is over 15, and then if it is, output the remainder on the first bit and a carry of 1 on the second bit. Example, 11 plus 8 equals 19, which is bigger than 15. So the remainder is 3, 19 minus 16, 3. It goes on the first bit, and a carry of 1 goes on the second. So, 16 times 1, 16, plus 3, 19. Now to do the first step, it's super easy. We just make a comparator adder, and we are basically done. For the second circuit, at first, I thought I needed two more circuits. One for detecting when the carry is needed, and one to calculate the remainder. But turns out, they're actually the same thing. If you have a remainder, you have also a carry. And the trick is super simple. We just need to subtract each input separately from 15, and then we subtract both from 15 again. That equals A plus B, so the total of the two inputs, minus 15. And of course, it, if the result is positive, we know that it's over 15, and we need a carry. And the output will give us exactly the remainder plus 1. We just subtract that extra one and send it out along with the carry, which is also one. And this circuit right here does exactly that. So we have our two inputs, A and B. We divide the two inputs into two parts, two separate parts, the bottom and the top. The bottom part right here will just add the two inputs together with a comparator adder. And the top part right here will calculate the remainder, give us the carry, back here through back here and then give us the remainder through here so for example right now we have 11 plus 8 which equals 19 so we need one in the carry and three in the lower bit so 16 plus 3 19. now just as a little fun note in binary they would call this a half adder you stack two together and you get a full adder which is just fancy jargon for saying that you now have three inputs and I have no idea if in hex it's, it has the same name but it works exactly the same you just stack two together and you get a full adder the two inputs plus a carry in input so yeah carry in right here and the way it works is basically you have your normal half adder and you add the output of that one to the input of another half adder and the third input you get it from the second input of the second half adder hopefully that was clear <laughs> but as you can see we also get two bits of output so the carry for the higher bit and the lower bit output right here so right now we're representing 16 plus 2 18 and if we see the inputs we have a 6 plus a 7 that's 13 plus a 5 18 so it works now I know it may look like a jumble of comparators right now, but if you want to check it out in detail, you can do so in the world download and you just follow the comparators and you'll notice that the circuitry does exactly what the mat does on paper. 
and I know it's a little bit big so that's why I set out to uh, compact it and what I did was compact the half adder and just arrange it a little bit so that we can stack it, stack it together so this is it this is 120 blocks in volume and it does exactly what the half adder does, just in a better arrangement uh, with some little knit tricks to make it a little bit more compact. And I also arranged the output so that we can easily tile it up. Tile it up. So, for example, the carry out is pushed here to the back so that we can just add up all of the carries with a comparator adder. And the lower bit output is brought from the back to the front right here to this reds and dust so that whenever we tile it up. Um, it connects with this comparator here and we can use it as the input of the next one. I can show it to you right now if we if we stack two of this together. There we go. The comparator as you can see connects to the redstone and we use the output of this first one as the input of the second one. Now um, we can do this up to for 17 inputs. Remember that the first one will have two inputs that we can use and every next one will have only one because the other input is just the output of the previous one and well all of these inputs are set to 15 as you can see except for the first one which, which is set to 14 and all of the carries are added with just a comparator adder going all the way through um, the whole circuitry and here we have the two outputs which is the higher bit 15 times 16 it's 240 plus the lower bid, which is 14, so 254. As I said, uh, if you tile a bunch together, you can get up to 17 inputs uh, before having to add a third bit. And this would have a maximum reach of 255 values in just two redstone wires. That is exactly what 8 bits in binary would get you. And that's the only advantage that I see of using this system that is just two wires and you get up to 255 the next one would be even more and well the disadvantages are it is very slow and it is very bulky if we change that to 15 so that we can get we can get the 255 um you can see it takes a while for the result to appear and there it comes there it comes there we go so 15 times 16 240 plus 15 255 the maximum value in just two redstone wires however each module that you add up adds one second of delay before getting the result so yeah the hex adder is bigger and slower than my blackjack hack <laughs> in my opinion and in my design as i said each module adds a second of delay to the result this could be changed in someone else's design actually one improvement that you can make is change this comparator for a target block in each of the modules and then you um you shave off two game ticks of delay per module which is already a lot if you tie them up uh but yeah it's definitely a clean way to push past 15 so huge thanks to matt for the suggestion once again it was really really fun to come up with this system as well For today's puzzle guys, I would love to see you come up with a way to double a hex encoded signal. It could be a single redstone dust or it could be a multi-bit signal, here are the instructions. Um, so that means it could be a single redstone dust like 0 to 15 or a multi-bit signal, you, you, you decide. 1 bit, 2 bits, 3 bits, whatever you'd like guys, just make a circuit that multiplies that hex signal by 2. Now a little note. In binary, you just bit shift, which is super easy. However, in hex, shifting multiplies by 16, not by 2. So, find a way to just multiply a signal by 2. The tools to solve this are already in this video, <laughs> so you have it very easy, guys. And the world download will be down in the description, so you can uh, check all of these uh, tools out, use them uh, in your solution or whatever you like. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with this time. So post your solutions on Twitter, Reddit, or my Discord server, and just tag me so I don't miss them. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.